I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. And a huge shout out to my new channel members and Patreon supporters, Jet Simon, Basic Terror, Enmark Games, Zan, Fuzel CC, James Welsh, Olivia Bernier, Tor Alexanderson, Matt, Fam Van, Amari Lewis, Seth Coble, and Retro Galaxy. Hey guys, I'm going to start a new series. I'm going to run it alongside my Castlevania series, so don't worry, those videos aren't going to stop. Um, there's just a whole bunch of other things that I want to do. Uh, one of those things is create some games for the Google Play Store. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Let's go to a new project. I've already got a concept for a game that's a bit of a kind of rip-off game um, of Flappy Bird. So I'm going to start with that one and I'm going to call my game Flappy Turd. Now I think there's some games out there to this similar nature, but I did a quick search on the Play Store and I couldn't find this exact title. So I'm going to go with this one. Now my viewport size needs to be specific to a mobile phone screen. So all I need to do now is change this from 180 to 320 on this side. Goes back into 9 by 16 orientation portrait and then optimize for pixel art and hit create. And there we go. We have our game. Now the viewport you can see is just kind of this top left hand side of the screen. So we can change that by just changing the size of the event sheet to 180 by 320 and now we have a one screen game so this is basically how the phone screen will look now the first thing we need to do is create the flappy bird or the flappy turd so let's double click and i'm just going to prototype this out with shapes to start with i'm going to add a sprite i'm going to make it 16 by 16 and i'm just going to color it in green i'm going to set the origin to the middle because I want it to kind of gently rotate around that orange and actually I might do that with the animation I'm not entirely sure yet but anyway the origin point is going to be in the middle now I'm going to give it a behavior it's going to have the platform behavior um, in actual fact I'm going to I've changed my mind already I'm not going to give it the platform behavior I'm going to give it the physics behavior because I want to be able to apply an impulse to it to move it up and down. So now if I play the game, that thing is going to just fall. And there it goes. What will happen is if it falls off the bottom of the screen, or in fact, what I need to do is I need to add in a ground because if it hits the ground, it's going to die. So let's go sprite. Uh, in fact, let's not even do a sprite. Let's do a tile background that while we're here, let's rename the player sprite to player. Let's double click and do a tile background. We're going to make this 16 by 16. And I'm going to color this in orange or kind of orangey brown. We don't need to worry about an origin point. Let's set the grid size to 16 by 16. Snap to grid and show grid. And I'm going to drag that down to the bottom right there. Let's give this also the physics behavior. Because if you want things to interact with other things in the game that have physics, they all need to have the behavior. This one though, the ground is going to be immovable. Otherwise it's going to fall. And I'm just going to call this one ground. Now if I go back and play, it's going to fall to the ground just nicely. Now we will set some conditions that say if we touch the ground, the game is over. Uh, but for now, we need to add an impulse. So let's go to the event sheet and create our first event. Let's go. Uh, actually, we need a touch because mobile phone is all done by touch. We're going to need the touch input. So we've added touch. We're going to go back to the event sheet, add an event, and we're going to say not touch. We're going to say, uh, no, we are going to say touch on tap. So this will basically say if we're tapping the screen anywhere in the screen on tap, we're going to add an action. We're going to say player. And we're going to say apply impulse at angle. The impulse is going to be 0.5 and the angle is going to be 270, which is directly up at its image point zero. Now we can, there you go. So you can see that it's not exactly what we want, but when we click, which replicates the touch, if we're on the ground, it shoots us up. But if we're falling, it doesn't do anything. So let's just double the impulse to one. 
There we go. And now we can bounce. What I think I might do is I think I might go back and add the platform behavior and just set the, the Y vector. So let's go back. Let's delete the physics. You can just click delete. It just means it's going to delete any instances of it in the event sheet. Let's take the behavior off of the ground and let's give the ground the solid behavior. Let's give the player the platform behavior. And let's go back. Oh, we need to default, but we need to remove the default controls. Let's go back and now on tap gesture, let's now apply an impulse to the player. And not an impulse, a Y vector, which basically means Y is moving up and a vector is the movement. Let's set that Y vector at minus 250. Okay, the gravity is also a bit strong. So let's click on the player. Let's take the gravity down to 500. There we go. And now we can we can click. Let's go back to the event sheet. Let's just say on tap gesture. Let's just say on any touch start because I want the I want it to be a bit more responsive. On tap, it was there was it felt like there was a bit of a delay in there. So let's go on any touch start, which there we go. Now it's going to happen immediately the moment the screen detects a touch. And that's working fine for our flappy turd. Now when we click the when we click and we're moving up, I want to change the animation, which we'll do. I want him to kind of be pointing upwards. And when we're falling, I want him to be pointing downwards. But for now, that works okay. We've got the basic mechanics of our player. I'm going to leave it there for this video. We're going to add more and more to it as we go through the series. And what I want to do with this series is build different types of mobile games uh, for the Google Play Store and then get them uploaded and actually live so people can download them. Um, I also want to set up and link my Google AdSense or my ad mods so I can start generating revenue from the adverts. I'm going to show you how to implement all of that as we go as well. This is going to be a full tutorial series on setting up the basics of the game, getting it uploaded to Google Play and then hopefully having it live on the App Store and um, making some, some money from it. So if you like that idea and you want to build your own mobile games and stick around, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss a future video and I'll see you in the next episode.